Okay, so the second approach to doing multi-class uh, multi logistic regression actually has a variety of names. It's sometimes called multinomial logistic regression, sometimes called just multi-class logistic regression, sometimes called soft max regression, and we will see this word again when we uh, look at more general versions of this method called uh, using neural networks or deep learning. Um, so anyway, so this is called soft max regression, sometimes called the maximum entropy classifier. Lots of n names, unfortunately, for this thing. Um, and um, sort of because many people uh, in different fields have used this and given it their own names and so on. Um, it would be nice if these things had a single name that is um, appropriately descriptive, I suppose. Uh, but, but this is what we have. Okay, so what is this approach? Um, so recall that approach one had n independent binary classifiers and then used all of them to classify any given data into one of those n different classes. Here we do, instead of n independent regressions, we do one holistic regression that c considers all the data all at once and all the classes all at once. Um, and it's again a kind of a generalization of the binary logistic regression. Um, so let's see how it is a generalization. Recall that for binary logistic regression uh, between two classes, uh, the probability that a point um, uh, belongs to class 1, let's say, is given by essentially the logistic function 1 over 1 plus e power minus z, uh, which can be rewritten in this form. Sometimes people would write it in this form, sometimes people would write it in this form. Um, and in our earlier notes, we happen to write it in this form, but for the purposes of this particular segment, it turns out it's convenient to write it in this form, okay? e power z, so multiply both the numerator and denominator by e power z, this equals this, okay? Where z itself can be some complicated function of the inputs, we can either have a linear expression or a nonlinear expression. Everything that follows applies to whatever expression that you have, you just need to make the appropriate modifications for linear versus nonlinear, right? But just for illustrative purposes, I'll use the linear version. Um, I'm sort of switching between n and m, but maybe m is better. Let's say we have m different classes. Um, then we define, instead of having just one z, we have m different z's, just like approach number one. It's kind of similar in that way, right? So in approach number one, we had um, z values for m for each of the m classes uh, where these coefficients um, there were different sets of coefficients for each of the m classes so exactly the same way um, we have these coefficients for each of the m different classes and we can define a z value for each of the m different classes which we are going to call z1 z2 z3 etc uh, until zm so we have essentially m real numbers um, and then we define or posit or hypothesize that the probability that a given point u belongs to the class 1, let's say there are classes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 until m, then the probability that it belongs to class m we say is e power z1 divided by e power z1 plus e power z2 plus e power z3 etc until e power z m. Okay. More generally, we are saying that the probability, I'm going to call that QI, um, that it belongs to class I is e power z i divided by e power z1 plus e power z2 plus e power z3, etc. Like sum over all um, e power z's. Okay. So this is the probability that a given data point belongs to class I. So at least this is the model. Okay, so there are m probabilities um, and the nice thing here is that these m probabilities will actually sum to 1 because if you actually sum the m expressions that have this form except the numerator has 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever, 
if you sum all of them for the sum, the numerator will actually be equal to the denominator. And of course, the sum of the probabilities will be equal to 1. So in other words, sum over qi over all the classes will be equal to 1. Okay. Um, so now the problem reduces to finding all these coefficients, uh, b0, b1, b2, etc., for each of the classes. So, so we have uh, lots of unknowns. Uh, to do this, we have to solve an optimization problem. Um, and we essentially have a generalization of uh, the logistic class function, which is sometimes called the multinomial logistic class function or the cross entropy loss function. Again, it's got a few different terms. Uh, before I describe that, um, we're going to define, uh, just like, first of all, um, this last function is defined for each data point, and then we sum over all the data points or take the mean over all data points. Um, same difference, at least for the purposes of optimization. Um, we will use the mean just for convenience. Um, okay. um, although traditionally it's defined as a sum, the mean is more convenient and performs better. Okay. Before we um, describe how to compute this last function, we describe something called one-hot coding, sometimes also called dum dummy coding, D-U-M-M-Y coding, of the data output. So what do we mean by that? Um, say each data point um, belongs to one of uh, five different classes. Um, okay, so say each data point belongs to one of five different classes. Uh, we can represent these classes by a decimal integer, like, like we've always done. So we can say it's 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5. Um, like for the MS database, it was 0 to 9. Okay. So instead of describing the actual class using this integer, we use what's called one-hot coding or dummy coding, like I said, uh, which converts an integer into basically a five-digit binary number. Uh, so that the ith binary number is actually 1 uh, if it belongs to class i, okay? So let me just explain what that means. So if something belongs to class 1, instead of saying it belongs to class 1, we'll say the output is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. If something belongs to class 3, instead of saying the output is 3, we'll say it's 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, so that the third digit of this number or of this vector um, is gonna be a one, okay? 